Hey everybody. Um, I got here to show you today is the uh, ESR Shield prototype that I've designed. Um, if you've seen the uh, video I posted earlier, I designed one that uh, worked with an analog meter. Well, I updated that design a bit and uh, used it to uh, uh, generate a uh, ESR meter using a uh, Arduino Uno and uh, LCD display. Take this off here. I'll show you guys. No magic. It's just a normal Arduino Uno. It's an it's an R3 version. 16 megahertz. Um, the shield that I created is uh, from the uh, based on the original circuit uh, by Manfred Morningweg. Um, it's got a couple revisions have done to it, of course. Um, it's using the TLB272 2772 op amp instead of the TLO62 which he, he designed. I have uh, three precision pots, three precision 20 turn pots, um, one for the attenuation, uh, one for the uh, frequency, and then one for the load on the output that we're measuring with the Arduino analog input. Um, just added a terminal block to connect our test leads to here. Uh, our pin headers for the uh, LCD shield that goes on top. This is a, uh, oh, a roughly a uh, 18 to 1 transformer. It's the output of the, uh, the first uh, op amp we have in this chip just set up as an oscillator. It's putting out a 5 volt square wave and we're taking that signal and knocking it down to about 170 uh, millivolts on the test leads and uh, then the second part of the op amp we'll go over the entire circuit in detail a little bit long, uh, further down the road uh, but anyway, basically the op amps and amplifying and rectifying it and displaying it as an analog voltage on uh, analog Five of the Arduino. Um, the calibration we we, we set it up as uh, set it up with the uh, the attenuation of the test leads and then the actual load on the output of the op amp, and that way we can span the uh, the analog output. Uh, other than that, it just has uh, three electrolytics, a couple uh, ceramics. Uh, a couple diodes and some resistors, so it's, it's a really simple circuit. Once you find a transformer, I found this transformer out of an old power supply that I just slapped in there. And it works pretty slick. Um, so I'll just go ahead and snap it right into the Arduino. Just like that. Then I have a Sane Smart LCD here. It's got a little button shield on it different buttons you can press on it. I have the, the Arduino program to display the output of uh, the analog uh, input that it's measuring the uh, voltage on. We'll snap it in place. And we'll reset the mess. And there it is. It's, uh, uh, it's pretty simple. I'll do a quick little demo of it right now and uh, we'll go over a few other things. When you first turn it on it displays the ESR value with the OL, the open loop moniker. Um, the first thing we need to do is calibrate it. To calibrate it, all we need to do is short the test leads. And it's reading a negative 1.7 ohms. We'll just, this up button is programmed to calibrate the meter. Okay, so we're reading 0 to 0 0.02 ohms flashing back and forth. So that's plenty good enough. Um, what I have set here, there's there's nothing special. These are just grabs out of my uh, uh, resistor trays. Um, I tested them across two different multimeters, so they're relatively close to the specified values. Um, and I'm not claiming to be a calibration shop. I'm just a hobbyist who's uh, taking my spare time and, and designing a, a little meter here for the Arduino. Uh, if you have precision resistors, you, you can take this down to whatever precision you wish. Um, 
mine, I don't know what, if it's probably within 5 or 10 percent, it's probably all the closer I am, and that's plenty close enough for me. So, uh, to measure the uh, resistance on this 10 ohm 1 percent resistor, it's reading 10.01 ohms. Now, that, uh, granted, the temperature does make a huge difference on these resistors. Uh, ambient temperature here in the lab is roughly 70 degrees. So, you know, I may be able to change the, uh, the resistance just by touching it with my hand and letting it warm up a little bit. But you are going to see a shift if, if, you, if you take it in from the warm or the cold, either way. Uh, 4.7 ohm resistor. It measures 4.68, 2.2 ohm, it measures 2.22, 1 ohm resistor measures 1.02. What I have here, I have two 1 ohm resistors in parallel for a value of 0.5 and the meter reads 0.53 and then I have five 1 ohm resistors in parallel that should have a value of 0.2 and that's reading spot on at 0.2 ohms, 0.22 flashing um, so with this uh, the setup I can easily uh, measure the resistance of some of these low ESR caps that are just really a pain to do with a an analog meter. Um, I'll go over a couple of these that I have taken out. This is a 16 volt 1000 mic cap. Polarity doesn't make any difference on these caps. And again, you, well, this meter set up currently the measuring voltage, the test voltage is roughly 170 millivolts at 100 kilohertz. The frequency is adjustable. You can run it at 50 kilohertz 100 kilohertz. You can take it all the way up to 1 megahertz if you wish. It doesn't really make any difference. But as you can see here, this is a low ESR cap. It's measuring 0 0.03, 0 0.05, exactly what it was supposed to. This is a 470 mic 16 volt cap. measuring 0.1 ohm, 0.08. This is a 220 mic 10 volt cap. It's measuring 0.28. This is a uh, 330 mic 6.3 volt cap. It's measuring 0.2 ohms. Three hundred thirty sixteen volt cap. Measuring 0.27. So all these are good caps. Here are a couple of poles that I took from the Action Tech DSL modem that I uh, had repaired. These are known bad. This is a 1000 mic 16 volt cap. And it's measuring at uh, 4.5 ohms. So that's way off. And here is a little 330 mic 6.3 volt cap, another known bad one. And it's reading 13.1 ohm, so that that one is really, really bad. Um, you can measure the resistance on inductors. This is a one micro henry one micro henry inductor.
So it's reading about 0.2 ohms. This is a 7.8 microhenry inductor. And we're reading just a little bit over 1 ohm resistance on it at 100 kilohertz. And this is a 100 microhenry inductor. And the resistance on it at 100 kilohertz is too high for my uh, meter to test. Uh, the, the meter itself, anything over about 20 ohms, and it's not going to be, be able to read it. That's because of the, the, it has such a slow, it has such a low working voltage. Again, the voltage across my test leads is 170 millivolts. So um, that's just a basic demo rundown of the meter. It, it works really slick. Um, it was a little bit of involved processing and I made my own uh, PCB board using Eagle CAD and I want to go through all these steps. Um, one other item that I want to show you, there's the button that I put on the shield displays the calibration factors. The CF is a, is a calibration factor for the ADC. Uh, when the leads are shorted together, the way that I have it scaled is the ADC should read 680, uh, and that's equivalent to about 0.7 volts. And likewise, the 10 ohm resistor ideally should read at 295 ADC, or 295 millivolts, the 285 ADC. So we're just a, a little bit low on the back side of that a little bit off on the high side, but it's definitely close enough for government work. Um, the cow button, you can just uh, turn it on and off to display those factors if you wish to see what the heck's going on with the ADC or not. It's just something I threw in there. You can also use that cow button uh, to run the calibration request if you have an LCD that doesn't have any buttons on it. Um, my LCD does, so I just went ahead and set this up to toggle the uh, cal factors on and off. Uh, again, to calibrate it, we just short the leads together, press the calibration button, which is the up button on the shield, and that will zero right out to zero ohms. Um, we're gonna, I'm a, I want to go over the layout of the circuit uh, schematic in Eagle CAD and the layout of the board design, uh, actually how this board was made. just so everybody understands it. Well, it's a homemade PCB. Um, it was my first board that I'd ever actually etched. Um, and I like to tell you I did on the first try, but I didn't. It, this was probably about, oh, my third or fourth try. I don't remember which it was right now. But you have to learn. And uh, it wasn't too bad once I figured out what I had to do to make it work right. These are 30 mil traces that I, I put on here. Um, the uh, silk screen on top is actually a toner transfer. That's the same way I did the, the board is, is actually a, a toner transfer method. Uh, I'll go over that. Uh, like I said, I'll go over the, the layout of the circuit, how the circuit works, what's, what exactly is going on here. Uh, then the layout of the board on Eagle CAD routing your traces, um, actually doing the etching. After the etching is done, uh, we'll go ahead and apply the uh, toner transfer silk screen. Then we'll go over the calibration. We, what we have to do is uh, when we first get the board operational, is we go in and set the frequency. You can do this with your uh, DMM or oscilloscope frequency counter, whichever one. It doesn't matter what you use. Then we need to scale out the inputs with the attenuation of the probes versus the load on the output of the op amp. And we can scale it uh, so we, we're measuring our uh, voltage drop across these uh, capacitors as accurately as possible. Then we'll actually go into the code for the Arduino. Once we get our, our board scaled out, 
set up to uh, 10 ohms is equivalent to 295 millivolts across and uh, dead short is 700 millivolts. We'll go ahead and set up the code inside the Arduino to read analog input number 5 and interpolate that voltage into resistance according to the voltage drop across a capacitor. So anyway, this is, this is going to take a couple of uh, um, videos to do it. Also, I'm going to use the I'm going to go over the coding in both uh, the Arduino IDE and uh, a Visual Studio plugin called Visual Micro. Visual Micro has a great little add-in um, for Visual Studio. It, it really uh, classes up the uh, IDE uh, for, for programming these Arduinos. You get all the Visual Studio uh, bells and whistles with it. Uh, so definitely get it. suggest you guys go look at that Visual Micro add-on because it has one, uh, not only is it the programming code that lets, allows you to program for the Arduino inside of Visual Studio, it has a debugger module that actually lets you debug your Arduino code through the serial port without doing all those print line statements. Um, I, I did a video on it in, on my channel if you want to go look at that video on the Visual Micro. Um, but it, I highly recommend you guys to go uh, take a look at that real quick too. So anyway, um, I'll, I'll finish this video here, the overview of it, and uh, I'll uh, come back and we'll take a look at the, uh, the circuit inside Eagle Cat. All right. If you have any comments, make sure you leave me any questions down below in the comments. And if you like it, give it a big thumbs up, guys. Thanks.